Hello everybody, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing my top 10 books of quarter, quarter 4 of 2022. So these are my favourite books from October to December of 2022. We have 10 books here. I also do my year favourites where I take each of my four quarterly favourites and pit them against each other to find my favourite book of the year. So keep your eyes peeled for that. In the meantime, let's get on with uh, Quarter 4. Dane reads... Also, in at number 10, we have Dishonesty is the Second Best Policy by David Mitchell. So this is basically a collection of various articles that he wrote for the newspapers that he contributes to. Um, very amusing, a, quite a diverse section of topics. Uh, the only thing I will say is that because it's just a collection of his newspaper articles, it doesn't really have like a narrative flow. It's very stoppy and starty. Um, but it does also mean that if you want some variety, you know, you don't want to just sit there reading non-fiction about the same subject for ages. It's a pretty good one to go for. And number nine, we have The Sound of Broken Ribs by Edward Lorne. Um, Shay's going to tell you about this one, aren't you, Shay? Aww. No? Well, Shay liked it a lot anyway. Uh, it's uh, both For both of us, it's the second Edward Lorne book that we've read. Uh, we read Life After Dane before that, and Shay really enjoyed that, so we picked up The Sound of Broken Ribs. Um, a lot of death in it, wasn't there? Everyone dies, basically. It was brutal, but in a really good way. I follow somebody who's had like a car accident that isn't really an accident. And yeah, people going around killing people and stuff. Do you have anything to add to that? No, Shay has nothing to add to that. She's very shy. But yes, it was good. At number eight, we have The Duke of Caladan by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. So this is the first in a new trilogy, so three books, um, by Herbert and Anderson. This is like a direct prequel trilogy to the original Dune. And um, yeah, this one does a really good job of sort of setting the scene. There's a lot of stuff about Duke Leto, um, the original Duke Leto, and he's one of my favourite characters from Dune, so I enjoyed all of that. Lots of good stuff. We will be hearing more from Brian and Kevin later on. Then we have Oryx and Craig by Margaret Atwood, and this is, all, well, I guess you'd call it literary fiction, but it's also dystopian slash uh, post-apocalyptic. Basically, the world has ended. There's been this genetic engineering going on that's brought a load of new life forms in. Um, and we kind of, through jumping backwards and forwards through time, we uh, get to know kind of how the world got into the state that it's in. This is also the first book of a trilogy that I want to read, uh, finish reading at some point. Sticking with Margaret Atwood, we have The Edible Woman. So I think this was her first novel, um, and this is very feminist. She actually said she wrote this before really knowing anything about the women's lib movement and stuff, but it kind of went on to become kind of an iconic text, I suppose, for, for people in f f feminist fiction. And it's also really cool because it's very, like, it's set in the real world, and it's very, like, just down, down to earth, grounded in kind of realistic characters and the way they interact with each other. Um, kind of reminiscent of Stoner by John Williams, which was my top book of few years back um, it's just normal people but really beautifully written then we have house arrest by alan bennett so this is alan bennett's pandemic diaries um, i've read most of bennett's diaries in fact i think i've read all of them all the published ones um, and they're not always that interesting they quite often end up being bedtime books but because uh, house arrest was quite thin it only covers the process of a year um, it's also obviously during the COVID-19 pandemic, so it, I think it's going to come on, like go on to become a historical kind of reference that people of the future will look back at and they'll read that to know what it was like to live during COVID. My favourite part was an entry where uh, his uh, boyfriend or husband, I think he's just boyfriend, I think he's like common law husband, um, he was a journalist, I think, and he was got, he got told in the office, they were like, how long uh, do you think you could work from home if, if, if you needed to? And they thought it meant people were going to be laid off. And obviously they were preparing for people to work from home during the pandemic. And um, Bennett said, this is thought to be unlikely. And then obviously they ended up doing just that. And number four, we have The Heir of Caladan by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. So this is the final book in that uh, new trilogy. Um, it does focus quite a lot on Paul, who isn't my favourite of the characters, but, um, you know, I see the reason for why they did that, because it kind of had to, um, by the very nature of the book, but it, it does a really good job of setting things up for you to then read the first June book, um, especially, like, the last 50 or 100 pages were really, like, a masterwork. Having said that, I think a lot of it was easier to write, because, obviously, it's like, uh, what do you call it, uh, pre -shadow foreshadowing what's going to happen, but obviously they've had these books for 50 years now, so it's kind of easy to write a dream sequence where someone has prophetic visions of the future when the future has already been written about. And number three, we have Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir, my last book of the year. And um, this book is uh, sci-fi, pretty hard sci-fi by the guy who wrote The Martian. Similar stuff, um, basically a guy volunteers as part of a crew to go and save Earth when this stuff called astrophage, which like absorbs sunlight 
threatens humanity and um, it's got kind of some really cool stuff to it because it's got bits of uh, like he has amnesia and slowly but surely remembers parts of his past life so it does that jumping backwards and forwards through time thing that happened in Oryx and Craig and uh, did really well um, those two are kind of exceptions that prove the rule really because I don't find that it's always done well but yeah Project Hail Mary a lot of fun it's kind of a cross between mystery and thriller but with hard sci-fi to it and number two, we have The Marlowe Murder Club by Robert Thorogood. So this is the guy who wrote Death in Paradise. I believe, oh no, it's not his first novel because he's written some Death in Paradise novels, but it's, I think it's his first standalone, even though it's part of a series or will be part of a series, but for, for his first non-Death in Paradise uh, novel. And yeah, it just follows some little old ladies in Marlowe, the town around the corner from me, um, investigating a murder. And it was really well done, very humorous as well. It kind of reminded me of what I try and do with my uh, Lightfall books. And at number one, we have Fairy Tale by Stephen King. Um, and the clue is in the name here. This is like a modern day fairy tale by Stephen King. Obviously, it's got your elements of fantasy in it, which worked okay. It's kind of like a portal fantasy. Um, but really, the stuff I enjoyed the most was the stuff set in our world that was a little grittier, that kind of followed what happened uh, to the main character before he went into the fantasy world. But still very well done. Uh, review of this, in fact, a review of a few of these. So I'll link to those uh, below as appropriate. But um, yeah, it was very good. So there we have it. Those are my top 10 books of Q4 of 2022. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.